Oh, yeah. Welcome to another episode of the Tech Preacher Podcast, baby. It's Apple season. It's Apple season, baby. We got to get into some things about Apple, man. Um, this whole week, we go dedicate talking about Apple, give you guys my thoughts on this dedicated podcast about some of the things that Apple did and some of the things that you need to be aware of, right? You need to be aware of some of this stuff, man. And the reason why is because, listen, we here is about the I'm I'm here for the consumer. I'm here for the consumer. All the stuff that Apple talked about, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts about it. And whether or not you like it or don't like it, it's here or there. But I'm gonna give you the tech preacher thoughts about it no matter what. All right. Ooh, baby. Let's get into it. So listen, man, the keynote address um came and gone. And Apple touched bases on some things that was head scratching and some things that was good. All right, so let's run it down real quick, right? Uh, Apple event was just a couple of days ago. They uh, they talked about the Watch 9 with the new Faster S9 uh, chip in it, right? You got 18 hours of battery life. You get 2,000 nits on, on the new Apple Watch, right? Uh, and it goes all the way down to one nit. Now, the thing that was strange to me, now, I mean, listen, people might like it, people may not like it. I don't know if I like it. This double tap, right? So if you have your your watch on and you get a phone call and you double tap your fingers together, it will automatically turn on your, you know, answer the call. Man, sometimes, you know, when you're doing a lot of things with your hands and you're kind of doing, doing things with your hands, sometimes the double tap would just automatically trigger off some notifications, may trigger off some other stuff. So I don't know. I'm sure that in settings you could turn it off. And I'm sure a lot of people go turn it off. I think if I had the Apple Watch, I'd turn it off. I don't know about this, this double tap. But I mean, look, it was a, it's a feature, right? So, I mean, that's here or there, right? Um, also, the... Um, the nine ultra two brings in the, the same faster chip, right? But you get 3000 nits, which is extremely bright. One thing that one of, one of the things that I like about the, uh, the new Apple watch ultra, even listen, if you got the one, I don't know if you want to go into the two, I, if you got the one, you should be fine. Uh, but the, the battery life, the battery life on the ultras is, is top notch as far as smart watches between Android and, well, I'm going to say between Samsung and Apple, all right? I just want to say that between Samsung and Apple, I think that you're going to get the better bang uh, as far as, you know, battery life. Because, look, I got the Galaxy Watch on, man, and I, I barely get, you know, 12 hours. And after that, I got to put it on a charger. So, but 36 hours is really good. It's really good. And then you get low power mode and stuff like that. So, that is very good. So, uh, I think... For the most part, the watch is, you know, an integrative upgrade. It ain't no big upgrade, right? All right, but let's talk about the prices. You have the watch SE, that's $249. The watch S9 is going to be $399. And the Ultra is $799, like it was last year. $800 bucks for an Ultra watch, just so you know. All right, so let's talk about the iPhone 15, right? Real quick, the iPhone 15, right? Some of the things that that uh, is a head scratcher for me is the iPhone 15, Right, I feel 15, I feel 15 plus. Same reason why we talked about the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 plus, which a lot of people did not recommend. And I am not recommending the 15 and the 15 plus because of a few reasons, right? First, the price point, right? Uh, we talk about 799, which is 800 bucks, and 899, which is 900 bucks. That's before tax. Listen, man. That's a lot of money for what you don't get, bro. I'm going to just tell you that. Nah, that's why a lot of people didn't recommend the iPhone 14s and the iPhone 14s Plus because really down, watered down specs and everything. Listen, you're going to get 2022 chipset in the 2023 device. Listen, I'm not saying that nothing, I'm not saying that the it's not powerful, all right? I'm, I, I just, it's just a, a, a logistics type thing, right? You, you just feel that you're not getting the latest and greatest when you're paying $900 for 2022 specs. That's the way I look at it, right? Uh, so looking at the 15 and the 15 plus, yes, you're getting a dynamic island now. 
which, again, that's one of the reasons why I didn't buy the 14 and 14 last year. It's because of the dynamic island. But I guess, you know, you got to get used to it. Uh, you got, you're going to get the dynamic island on a 15 and 15 plus. You get 1,600 nits of regular brightness and 2,000 nits of peak brightness, which is fine. I mean, that, that's very, very bright. Uh, you, it, it comes in at 6.1 inch or 6.7 inch uh, displays. You get the 48 megapixel camera, two times zoom. Yeah, you know, uh, two times zoom is on the Android side, man. Two times zoom is really nothing. But hey, listen, we talk about Apple. You get the A16 chip again, man. I mean, that's something that that kind of concerns me. Every year you get last year chipset. I'm going to talk about that a bit here. One of the reasons why I don't recommend the 15 and the 15 plus. Uh, and it comes in at, you know, 800 bucks and 900 bucks, prospectively, USB Type-C. Wow. Also, you get, the, you know, uh, the satellite services, right? Okay. So let's talk about the 15 and the 15 plus, in my opinion, right? Let's talk about it for a second. First of all, you get USB 2.0 instead of USB 2.3, right? So you're not getting you're not getting USB 3, you get USB 2. Uh, with the new iPhones, we're going to talk about the Pro Maxes and stuff like that. It, it, it has the action button. You don't get the action button. You still get the, the flippable button on the uh, 15 and 15 uh, plus. Okay. Uh, and you, you you only, get, like you see, like I said, you only get an A16 Bionic chip, right? Uh, that is in the iPhone 14s. Uh, so you get 2022 chipsets in there. Not again, not saying that it's not powerful. I'm just saying that you it just feel that you're getting you're not getting the latest and greatest for nine hundred dollars. That's all I'm saying. Listen, a lot of people say, well, it's still more powerful than a lot of Android phones out there. I understand that. That's not the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is that it's 2022 specs. That's the point. 2022 specs and we had 2023 that's the point for 900 bucks and for 900 bucks you're still not getting an always on display and you're still not getting a, at least a 90 to 120 hertz display now a lot of people may proclaim that hey the average consumer doesn't care about uh 90 or 120 hertz here's here's the problem with with that apple is praying praying on the uneducated Think about this, right? Apple is sliding in something to the uneducated to make them pay $900 for features that, that's available, again, on the Android ecosystem for $300 and $400 phones, right? So what I'm saying is they're preying on your intelligence. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that, listen, I believe that the average consumer is a lot more smarter now than they ever been. A lot of people believe that the average consumer doesn't care about 120 hertz and all that stuff like that and promotion and stuff like that. I believe that people just a little tad more educated now than ever because we YouTube content creators, we've been pounding it. If you go on social media, people talk about it. If you go on any other websites, people talk about it, criticize Apple for putting lower um, refresh rates on the on nine hundred dollar phones. So year after year, and article after article, and YouTube video after YouTube video, and and you know social media posts after social media posts. I believe that the, the average consumer is a little more educated now than they ever been when it comes down to refresh rates. So the argument of people not caring about refresh rates for nine hundred dollars, I think. People again, people are just a little more educated now than ever. So I think people really do realize about refresh rates and and a lot more smoothness and stuff like that. Now a lot of people may argue that iOS, the operating system itself, is a lot smoother and it's a lot buttery smooth, even with a 60 hertz display. I don't think it's the point. If the iPhone was 400 bucks, then a 60 hertz uh, refresh rate would have been acceptable. If it was. $599, I believe it would have been acceptable because listen, when the when the uh the the, the Google Pixel 6 came out, 6A came out with a 60 hertz display, it was countless of articles. Everybody slammed the device for coming in at $599 or $699 with a 60 hertz refresh rate. If Samsung would have dropped a $900 phone with a 60 hertz refresh rate, it would have been pitchforks and shovels uh, uh, for 
you know, Samsung demise. So when we talk about refresh rates and we talk about better bang for your buck for the consumer, it, listen, even if the consumer doesn't care about refresh rate, I believe that they deserve to get better refresh rate. That's the whole thing for $900 for the plus model. I believe that the average consumer deserve it because it's a high price device for not getting all the features. So that's the thing that to, to me that I talk about refresh rates. All right. So let's move on to the iPhone uh, Pro, the iPhone Pro Max. With something that I, that kind of freaked me out about the, the Pro and the Pro Max is, is that uh, you get op, uh, more optical zoom on the Pro Max than the Pro. You Listen, uh, like Apple is separating, uh, you know, the camera tech in the Pro and the Pro Max. I, I always thought they would have been the same, but look like... Uh, Apple is kind of separating it a little bit, which I, I, I just don't see why would they do that, but they are doing that. Okay, so uh, let's see. And I'm on I'm on their website right now, and I'm looking at some of the some of the things that the Apple have done here, and uh, going from that. So let's talk about the the Pro and the Pro Max. You get titanium. Now here's the thing: if, if when you watch the keynote address, they talk about a mixture of aluminum and titanium. So that's not 100% titanium here because they talked about how the inside of the shell is aluminum and some parts of the outside shell is titanium. So I know they go run with the word titanium, but I don't believe it. When they talked about it on the keynote address, they did mention some stuff about inside is aluminum and outside some parts of inside is titanium. They fuse titanium and aluminum together to get you this structured and listen man so that means it's not 100 percent titanium it's it's aluminum with a little sprinkle of titanic i mean t t titanic <laughs> titanium in it so just so you know man it is um you, you you got to you got to read and listen between the lines and that's what i heard it comes with a three nanometer chip which is the new a17 pro chip which is very fast listen i am impressed over what this device can do all right, listen, man, uh, some of the things that Samsung missed out on in 2023 is in the game of performance with ray tracing. For it re I remember about a year ago when they was bragging on how the Galaxy S23 is going to give you ray tracing and all this enhanced gaming performance and all that stuff like that with this new high-end chip that Samsung was going to put in the Galaxy S23 Ultras. Guess what? They put the chip in, but they didn't put the ray tracing in. So I don't know. I mean, I understand the software and all that stuff but maybe uh Qualcomm didn't can't keep the thermals down can't do this and do that well guess what Apple beat them to the punch because they're coming out with ray tracing and stuff like that so that will bring your mobile gaming experience to the next level I think uh when they come down to gaming on the iPhone iPhone gaming has already been pretty good but now with the introduction of uh of ray tracing and stuff with this powerful a717 pro chip in it it's going to be fine i think you're going to get a very good gaming experience now one of the things that for me go knock some of the gaming experience is that dynamic island listen man you can say what you want about the notch you can say what you want about dynamic island Listen, man, with Samsung phones and some of the Android devices out there with the not small peephole notch at the top, it gives you a better overall viewing experience. I don't know about this notch. This notch is intrusive. I mean, all your notifications be popping up all on the screen and all that stuff like that. Listen, I understand they want to go a little thinner bezels and stuff like that, but that dynamic island is an eyesore in my opinion. I, you can say you can get used to it and stuff like that. I never got used to the notch, and I probably never get used to the uh, dynamic dynamic island but yes apple is putting that in uh, this device all right so you got ray tracing listen one of the things that really caught my eye is the the features of the cameras right listen man I, you know apple really and truly trying to go really pro in the cameras i don't know see it's hard to go pro in the camera system when you don't have pro mode i can't i can't film with an iPhone using the regular camera app, even if it's in cinematic mode and stuff like that, because I have no control over my aperture, my ISO and my white balance and stuff like that. So if I don't have no control over that, I can't call it pro. So even though, 
you know, Apple is doing a whole lot of stuff with their cameras. Listen, you have to download third-party apps in order to get manual mode on their cameras. Because, listen, a lot of people say, well, for the average consumer, they just turn on the camera and shoot. Well, okay. But Apple is doing pro features on a camera system with cinematic mode and all kinds of things like spatial uh, video and stuff like that. Well, if you want to have a pro camera, right, you have to have pro camera features and not adjust your, your aperture, your your focus, not doing manual focus versus, you know, auto focus. Because, listen, man, a lot of us filmmakers, man, we don't use auto focus a lot on when we shoot in video. So, Auto focus versus manual focus, uh, you know, adjusting your white balance, adjusting your ISO, adjusting all that stuff like that before you turn the camera on. That's for pro guys. That's for pro videographers. So I, I, I look at the, you know, what was what Apple is doing is is going to that level of making a camera system pro. They just need to put pro features in the camera tech it in the camera app in order to get that 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 type of pro stuff so ah, i don't know i don't know i think that apple has a little way to go when it comes down to the pro stuff when they move on their devices now one of the things that i really do like uh that apple is doing is that they are uh allowing the usb-c port to connect to an external drive. So if you film in for long periods of time, you have this, this, uh, you know, the external drive. Like if you had a one terabyte or two terabyte external SSD, I'm, I'm assuming it's SSDs that you're able to, to film straight onto the SSD, which is absolutely marvelous at this point, right? Because now, even if you got a 256 gig model, you have unlimited, uh, you know, when it comes down to a uh, filming uh, on the device, I think it's going to be great. So, just so you know, I think uh, I like that part. And listen, for in order to do all of this stuff on this device, it has to have a lot of power. So that's where the A17 Pro chipset is going to come in at because you need that kind of power to do everything that Apple is proclaiming. It has to be tested, but uh, this by them announcing that type of stuff is pretty exciting to me. Uh, also, doing the night modes in Boca in the background using night, night mode, that is some serious work that the A17 and the GPUs and stuff in, intertwine to work. That's some serious power, man. Apple is really doing it. I just need Apple to come up with a pro app like how they're on Xperia, uh, devices have they have their pro app where you can add lux and all kinds of things for pro videographers right average consumer not going into those modes but if they're going to go with these pro features man with uh you know with these pro things that you could do with this device i think they need to add you know, some kind of pro app on a device so you can make all your adjustments. That's the only thing that's missing on these pro, so-called pro iPhones. But I think the camera system will be enhanced. I think the camera system will be good. You got 4K FPS, uh, 4K frames per second on cinematic mode and stuff like that. Now, let's talk about one of the things that I, I, I was like concerned about is the price. Listen, the Pro, the regular Pro is $9.99 for $128. Now, what, they, what Apple is doing is it, it took away the $128 on the um, the Pro Max and forcing you to pay $1,200 for $256. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like because a lot of people say, well, if you would upgrade to the 256 you would have paid $1,200 anyway. I understand that. But option is is good. Apple was forcing you to 256. Listen, with the external drive support, 128 would have been just fine for filmmakers. Think about this. For filmmakers, you got external drive support. So that means that 1099 would have been perfect for people buying a few phones and they want to do some professional filming. Now, listen, man, I always say this, and I would say this, right? You know, videographers and filmmakers, man, if you're going to be serious about your craft when it comes down to filming, you're not using the iPhone. You're going to use professional cameras, right? So for $1,200, bucks, 
you on the edge of getting professional cameras. Matter of fact, you can buy CV1s and all that stuff like that for under 1200 bucks. So at the $1,200 price point, if you are into filming serious filmmakers and stuff like that, you're not buying an iPhone for that, right? So I think that if Apple forcing you to buy a $1,200 phone for 256 right? But I mean, look, Samsung got they they devices. I think it's twelve eleven twelve hundred bucks for their uh, two fifty six. So I mean, that's here or there. It's the same price as, as Samsung. But uh, overall, I think uh, you know the cameras looks pretty promising. The only thing that I didn't like about Apple cameras, and I've been on record saying this, is about their color science. Their color science is something that less to be desired for, in my opinion. But listen. Pre-orders is going to be Friday. So get your pre-orders in if you want to get it. They also got the, uh, the, the trading deals. Now, listen, Apple is not giving you the best trade-ins like how Samsung was giving you $1,000 for your 13 Pro Maxes. Well, guess what? You're not getting $1,000 from Apple on the S22 Ultra. They don't even have the S23 Ultra up for pre-order. I mean, uh, for for uh, trading. So this, so you know. Hey, listen, overall keto address, I find that they wasted a lot of time talking about, you know, we trying to be environmental friendly. And so they wasted a lot of time on that. Overall keto address, you have to listen to the words because listen, they threw some stuff out there, man. Because if you think about it, right? You get USB uh, 2.0 on the 15s and the 15 pluses. You get USB 3.0 uh, on the, the 15 Pros and Pro Maxes. But they said the, the, the cord, the USB cord is optional. That means it's not coming with it. That means that you, if you want those fast data speeds, if you want to do external drives, if you want to get fast charging, you got to buy a cord. And you probably have to buy a power brick because on a website, they say that uh, make sure you have a compatible brick, uh, a compatible cord to get fast speed. So that tells you right there that Apple is not going to give you a fast charge in the box. They're not going to give you the, the fast cord. They're not going to give you none of that. You have to buy all that stuff. And this is the stuff that you have to really, really pay attention to because Apple talk about the environment one thing, but they're going to sell you a cord. Uh, in a power brick so they can make money on it. See, that don't make no sense to me, right? You're trying to save the environment, but if somebody's switching from an iPhone 14 to an iPhone 15 and need a power brick, guess what? You need a, you need to buy a power brick because they say the uh, compatibility may be different on the uh, on some of the older tech that you might have in your home. Apple is, is trying to make money off of power bricks, so just keep that in mind. Money, try, uh, Apple trying to make money on their cords. So if you want faster data speeds, if you want faster charge, you got to get the cord and you got to get a power brick. So just so you know, if you buy the $1,100 to $1,200 iPhone 14, 15 Pro Max, set aside about another 150 bucks for accessories. So you're looking at $1,350, well, plus tax, you're looking at about $1,500. Bucks. So just got to, you just got to keep that in mind. All right. Just keep that in mind, people. But um, let's see what it's all about. All right, so let's talk about the word of the day because I'm almost out of time already, man. I've been talking so much. Let's go and tell you about the word of the day. Every week I talk about the word of the day. The word of the day is this, man. Sometimes you got to make a change. Sometimes you have to. If, if, if you work hard at something and you don't see the progression, go to all-time hikes, sometimes you got to make a change. Sometimes you got to get back and strategize how, how things work. And this is what I'm doing on this YouTube channel, right? I've been on this YouTube channel seven years, seven years. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've been working my ass off to try to, you know, give you guys the best content, period. The problem is, is not us, it's YouTube. YouTube wants you to do all kinds of bent over backwards, doggone, you got to have the, the best thumbnails, the catchy titles, the best videos. When you put it out there, they don't they don't uh, spam it out to your your subscribers. They don't let you. They don't notify your people. They don't put you in the algorithm. It don't matter how many years you work on YouTube. It's like you you can't win. Listen, man. What I used to do, 
I used to spend two, three hours every day trying to, you know, take my videos and put it on other platforms so I could try to grab eyeballs. You know, to try to, you know, because I know people don't get notifications. So you, 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 you take three days to make a video. Then once you post a video, you see that YouTube doesn't do anything for you. So you have to go out there and put the work in. But why you have to do that? See what I'm saying? Especially if you are a veteran in the game, especially if you've been on a platform for years, especially if you have a well-established channel, right? You should have to do that. So what I did was I sit back and I say, you know what? Let me start exploring other options. So what I did was I went on TikTok and I'm already been on Instagram. So I'm on Instagram and TikTok. So what I started doing was I've been focusing a lot on short content. As y'all guys been seeing, I've been dropping a lot of shorts. Uh, and But that's coming from TikTok. I want to give a huge shout out to TikTok and the community of TikTok, man. They've been, they, they have been great. I've uh, been dropping my content over there. Y'all guys have been supporting it. Um, I've only been on TikTok as of me recording this podcast for a few weeks. It's been very, very special. I've been doing a couple of live streams over there. I'm doing live streams on TikTok every Saturday. Uh, I've been dropping content over on TikTok. Y'all guys been responding very well. Uh, Y'all guys been looking at the content. Y'all been supporting the content over there and everything. So I've been posting a lot. Uh, on TikTok and I started posting some of my content on Instagram and the reason why because it's 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 so weird how I could post one video on YouTube and the same video on TikTok and on YouTube I get a few hundred views and on TikTok I get 10,000 views you see what I'm saying so it's a it's a it's a fundamental difference and I, I understand the people is different, but I think it's the algorithm that's really hindering a lot of us content creators on YouTube. So I had to explore my horizon, man. I had to explore what I do here. So I've been focusing a lot on three platforms. YouTube is always going to be my bread and butter. I love YouTube, right? But I've been working and focusing a lot on my TikTok, and I've been focusing a lot on my Instagram because I'm trying to explore different horizons. I'm trying to post a lot of content on those platforms because I'm getting a lot of love on those platforms. I'm not saying I don't get a lot of love on this platform, but you know, it's 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 a fight. It's a fight. And not only that that it, it's a fight on this platform, but people on this platform, they are weird. They like to listen in my comments. I have almost 2000 videos in my comments. People fight all day in my comments about who got the best phone. My phone is better than yours and stuff like that. Listen, man, it's so toxic sometimes when you talk about smartphones in the tech room. I go to TikTok, I drop the, uh, the same video, phone videos and stuff over there, and it's all getting good praise. Nobody fighting in the comments and nobody talk about they got the better phone and all that stuff like that. Listen, man, it's a totally difference between some other platforms. And so I've been dropping a lot on TikTok and I'm on Instagram and I've been dropping some content over there. So that's where I'm going to be at. But I'm still going to rock and roll on YouTube at this, at this. Sometimes you just have to broaden your horizon. Listen, the positivity for me is that I recognize and I pursue other options. I can't be complacent on one platform because if one platform Listen, YouTube is failing us content creators. I'm just letting y'all go. No, YouTube is failing. It don't matter the thumbnail. Listen, you got to do your research. You got to find out what's trending, make videos for the people and blah, 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 blah. You do all that stuff and you still don't make it. And that's what I don't like. So that's the word of the day. This be stay positive, but broaden your horizon. That's it, baby. Yes. Another episode of the Tech Preacher Podcast, baby. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget about I'm on Spotify. I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. The Tech Preacher, baby. I got the broad by rising. I got to stay positive, but I'm going to be in this game, baby, till I'm gone. That's what I'm talking about. Thank y'all guys very much. We're going to see you next week. Same bad place, same bad time, baby. Oh. Yes. The tech preacher, baby. I preach about tech. It don't matter if it's on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. I'm going to preach about tech. Holla at your boy. Yay. Yes, indeed. I'm going to see y'all guys next week. Later.